Hey guys, and welcome back to where we have the Iron Throne. This is finally ours. Danny has what she finally has wanted for all this time. Ever since she was a little girl, it's all mine. <laughs> we have a lot to do, actually, though. Uh, this is actually kind of where it gets a bit more difficult. We, we've done kind of the easy part, the war and whatnot, but now we come to the real Game of Thrones, the politics. And obviously for me, because like I said, the way I like to play... We're going to try and decide on what to do based upon what I think Danny would do. What does she think is the best thing to do? And who does she like and etc, etc. So we were looking at, obviously, the Stormlands. Who should we give the Stormlands to? At the moment, I'm thinking the Selmies. We could possibly give it to Barristan's own son, which is a good possibility, I think. I think that's the one I'm leaning to right now, probably give it to the son. Though he's quite young, we could wait till he gets to a good age. I want to check my court and make sure who we have left. Um, obviously, last time we saw Mormont was a little bit sick. So I'd like to check to make sure he's okay. We've got Jacaris. That is obviously Aegon's son. So Aegon's son is around. Jogo, Ago, both our Dothraki guys have made it all the way here. Good to see them on board. So Grey Worm, of course. Hero is here. Um, Drogon, of course, is here. <laughs> obviously, he's hurt the last time we saw. He's a bit wounded. Hopefully, that heals. We've got some people in jail. Um, Aegon. Mormont is still alive. Tumko is still alive. Red Lamb is still alive. Selmy's son is still alive. Yeah. It's looking pretty good. Um, yeah, we've, we've still got a lot of the people. Mormont, are you still sick? No, Mormont no longer has scurvy. Good to see. Ah, thank you. Out of all of our advisors, from like, when, when you consider like, from Westeros advisors, Mormon is like the only one left. Tyrion's dead. Barris, uh, Barris and Selmy's dead. Only Mormon made it to us to be next to us on the seat of the Iron Throne. But we've got a lot of things to do. Like I said, we've got to deal with all our prisoners. We've got to deal with all the politics. There's a lot of things for us to do. Um, we can colonize places. We'll probably colonize Summer Hall at some point. We're going to keep our money, though, for now. Just in case there's civil war. There could be a case of civil war at any point. So we need to keep our money just in case. Now, the situation my son, obviously my daughter was eaten by the dragon. My son also was unable to tame his dragon. I can imagine this upsetting Danny a lot. But what to do with my son? I'm sure some people are quite happy because I know you guys, I've been reading the comments. I know a lot of you have been wanting these two to die. In fact, some people even going forward and saying I should kill them, which I don't think Danny would do. <laughs> I don't think Danny would kill her own kids, even if she doesn't like the father. She wouldn't go that far. But one of them's dead. I'm sure those people are happy. And the other one is now disfigured and severely injured. So we're going to wait and see if he recovers from that before we deal with marriage. Um, if I do find a good marriage for Danny, I will obviously break, break the betrothal and try and find him a marriage. Hopefully I can invite him to court or something so he doesn't get married off by his father. That's really our main concern as the father right now. So we need to wait for him to come to age. Uh, the council then. So right now we have a lot of people in the council. Um, we'll probably wait until the Omega War um, system kind of breaks down for that. Ask help manager titles, request a coronation. Move capital to the King's... I think she would move her capital to King's Landing, definitely. There we go. So we've moved our capital to King's Landing. Um, request a coronation, yeah. Give your child a dragon. <laughs> Do I give him another dragon? I feel like we should. Yeah. Let's give him a dragon. So I've given my son a dragon. Come on, you're approved to me. You can tame a dragon. We'll check that in a second. Um, we will request a coronation. Of course, Danny's now back. I've expressed my wishes and desires for coronation at the Great Sept of the Faith to His Holiness the High Septon. Hopefully, he will accept. Of course, he'll accept. In the name of the Seven, I would like to offer you my blessing to allow your coronation in the Great Sept. Thank you. He is, the, he is the craven one, so I'm going to probably guess that he only did this to save his own skin. He's like, oh my god, Danny is here with the dragons, we will help, we supported the Lannisters, I, I better give her what she wants. Of course, of course, my queen, we will, of course. He, he would bow down to anyone, basically. Excellent. Send out the letters. But Howland Reed is not going to come. That's because he knows, he knows about Jon Snow. <laughs> Um, Harlan Wagstaff is not going to come. The Lord Commander of the King's Guard will not come. 
Sans is not going to be able to attend. I mean, they might have their own things to deal with. Maybe that's why. Um, and we haven't dealt with the traitors just yet, so the King's Guard is going to be a big thing for that. Ooh, making our own King's Guard is going to be interesting. Let's have a look at the other things we can do right now. Establish Household Guard. We don't need to do that right now. By knighthood. Ask the Iron Bank for a loan. Instructor Flagship could be kind of fun. Um, Great House Scoreboard. Yeah, I think we're fine for now. Okay, let's go back then. Okay, so those things are done. We've got a few prisoners we've got to deal with. And let's let time go by then. And there we go. Okay. That was a lot of things that just popped up. Let's deal with all these things. How do the Veil as you set the title of High Lordship of Iron Oaks? Okay. We filled the ambition to see our house in the Iron Throne. Of course we did. Now we need a new ambition. Groom and heir? Obtain a Valerian Steel Sword? See, it's interesting actually, when it comes to Groom and heir, there are a lot of people who think that maybe Danny is there to kind of break the cycle. Like she's meant to she's meant to be there to destroy the Iron Throne in a way, to disband it, possibly. And, you know, lead on to something maybe more like a republic or something. But there's some people throwing that around, possibly. Because, you know, she's quite progressive in her ideas. You know, she wants to get rid of slavery and whatnot. Then again, obviously, she does always say it's mine by right. But, yeah, a lot of people I've heard have been throwing that around. That she'll die without kids. Because, obviously, you know, there was the whole thing with uh, Miri Mazda when she said she wouldn't be able to have kids. Obviously, we now know that she might be able to. So there's that. So that's kind of changed. But I'm just throwing that out there. People have been saying that. Become exalted among men. Uh, among men, I think she might go for that. But I'm still sword. You know what? Yeah, because she's trying to rebuild. I guess the house in a way. She's getting back was rightfully hers. We are still missing, you know, Blackfire and, uh, you know, Dark Sister. Actually, in fact, maybe we should have a quick look if those are known to be anywhere right now. I'm gonna have to go for all these. I think first though. The war's been won. Our enemies have been crushed and the Lawless forces have been defeated. Prince Qualton Lannister, once your opponent has been brought before you to hear your judgment. This, now, this was the king, obviously, but he's just a young boy. He's just a he's just a young boy. He controls Storm's End at the moment, obviously. We took away Storm, the Stormlands from him, which, you know, is ours. Well, not ours, but it's is not his by rights. He's not really a Baratheon, as we know. He's actually a Lannister in sheep's clothing. So what do we do? Do we leave him be, though? You know, he's just a little boy. Do I just, you know, use him, have him as a hostage? Um, I shall judge his family justly. They'll decide the fate of the Lannister exiled family. We've got uh, Meloria. Who's Meloria? Okay, so she's the daughter of Marcel Lannister. We've also got to deal with Sir Lucian Lannister, Marcel Lannister, and Prince Teon. So we've got to deal with all the family there. I want all their heads on pikes. I feel like Danny would judge the family justly. You know, if they have done any crimes, they should be dealt with justly. Now, out of all our Westerosi kind of advisors, we only have Mormont. Mormont's not... He's been away for a long time. He wouldn't know exactly what to do. And these are all young people. Think about it. She is, you know, the daughter. She's she's not got the crimes of her mother or her father or, you know, anyone else. She She's just been there. I feel like, yeah. And Lucian Lannis is just uh, her husband. Yeah, yeah, I, I think she would judge the family justly. She doesn't know enough about what's going on, so she's going to try and do it justly. Many of Colton Lannister's kinsmen have fled into exile. Shall I issue a decree declaring them enemies of the realm? This would maybe dissuade my bannermen from using them against me. Leave them in peace, or I declare them enemies of the realm. I feel like she would. If any of them have escaped, all of Carlton Lannister's kinsmen in exile shall be declared enemies of the realms. I'm guessing someone like, you know, Kevin Lannister, possibly. I feel like she would, because that's what happened to Danny. Danny, you know, was, you know, declared an enemy of the realm. Her, her and Viserys were hu tried, possibly hunted down. That's what they say, obviously. Danny's not completely sure how much they were hunted down, because she says that maybe, you know, Viserys maybe played it up a bit. Um, but it did. She did. Oh, I think I think I remember creating the book. She goes. She always felt that they were being followed. Obviously, for her and for Ceres, it was a long journey when they were kids. You know, they went off to you know Bravos with uh, Willem Darry, and they had to go into exile. Willem Darry obviously died when they were quite young because you know he wasn't in great health. They'd go around to all the different high lords and people of you know Bravos and Essos, basically begging for help, and have to go between all of them. So it's hard. We we don't really know exactly what's going on. I guess only for Ceres might know what actually happened completely. Danny was too young, but obviously Viserys was basically crazy. 
So I'm paranoid. I'm not sure you can trust... If I was Danny, I wouldn't trust anything that he said, really, um, about what happened. But yeah. So I, I think we should be enemies of the realm. Yeah. Lady Cersei apparently loses her opinion of me. <laughs> actually, did any of his family actually escape? Did any of them actually escape, like, from King's Landing? Now, they're off over there. Let's try and find the main line. Tybalt... Stuff I, okay, let's go through here then. Let's try and find the main line. Tywin. Okay, Cersei Lancer actually is in our dungeons as well. Yeah, she's actually in my dungeons as well. Okay, the war's been won. Our enemy armies have been crushed and the lawless force has been defeated. Sir Robert Strong, once your opponent has been brought before you to hear your judgment. Now, Robert Strong, you know, there is obviously the rumours going around. No one knows who he is, but the rumours would be that he is obviously Clegane somehow kept alive um because now obviously all the rumors will be coming out we'll be able to hear them at court and people go oh, yeah he's definitely Clegane and I think you guys can guess how Danny's gonna feel about Clegane she's gonna bloody hate him she's gonna absolutely detest the sight of him he raped uh her brother's wife you know you know Rhaegar was her brother he raped his wife and killed her and killed her niece and nephew a despicable act which cannot go unpunished I I think Danny would uh, ask him to bring me his head. I don't think she could do... Yeah, it'd have to be bring his head. So we're going to kill Robert Strong, or Clegane. That means Oathkeeper will probably go to the Kettle Black, which I'm not particularly happy about, but oh well. The war's been won. We've now got Sir Talatol, another member of the King's Guard. Now, we don't know much about him. He's be a, a you know, sort of lowborn man who's put himself into this position. He looks like a, a nice guy. Not terrible. You know, he's brave. He's gregarious. Uh, temporary. He doesn't seem like an evil man. Um, I'm not sure Danny would kick him. She might say he's not fit. That's the only one I could think of. Who actually is his father? Oh, yeah. No one. Um, would she take him out or would she just leave him be? I'm feeling like Danny would want to put her own people in. But as we saw before, there were a lot of Kingsguard missing anyway. So we have a lot of room to put our own people in. I think she'd leave Talad the Tall in. Um, and I love I love the fact his name is Talad the Tall. It just reminds me of uh, Duncan the Tall. Then we get Balon Swan. Now, Balon Swan, again, Danny probably doesn't know much about. Mormont probably doesn't know much about him. He doesn't seem terrible. He's not maybe the nicest man, but he is honorable, um, honest, content, brave. I think she could see he could be quite a useful guy. He's obviously a good fighter. I think we'd leave him be. Now, Kettle Black. Now, obviously... Everyone's going to hear about the way that, you know, the Kettle Blacks are obviously scheming, connivers. I don't think there's any way that we could keep him as being, you know, Lord Commander. Definitely not. And I think Danny would have her own opinion of who should be Lord Commander. We have our own allies, people who support us, who we want to bring into the King's Guard. I think you guys can already know who those people are going to be. So, we're not going to kill him. But we're going to say he's not fit um, to serve in the King's Guard. He abdicates to Talad the Tall. Hmm. Maybe I should make some other people first. It? Because I would like someone else to be it. Then maybe that's already decided. Ha. Huh. I'd like to make, you know, someone else, you know, to be Lord Commander. Let's have a quick look to see if they can, if it will change. We'll add one person. I know some room. Like, Jogo and Ago. We could make them members of the King's Guard. I'd love to see that. Having Dothraki King's Guard would be hilarious. Not sure if that'd be frowned upon, but I don't think Danny would care. She would say, "Who cares if I'm from a different culture? They supported me when others would not. They saw how good I was. They saw my worth. We should bring them aboard. Grey Worm, of course, and you know, Hero. They can't have children. They're eunuchs. They would be great choices. I think Grey Worm would be a great choice as Lord Commander. Personally, I would love Mormont. If anything, Mormont would have been a Mormont as Lord Commander would have been perfect, but I don't think he can because he's married. Yeah. Damn you, Mormont. Why did you marry someone who looked like me and then she shaved her hair off and was bold? Maybe she did that because she didn't like the fact she maybe she met me and she was like, wait, Mormont, I look exactly like her, the woman you used to serve. And then Mormont's like, oh really? I, I never noticed. Well, that isn't that isn't that such a massive uh, coincidence? Hmm. And she shaved her hair off, going, Now do you still love me? And Mormont's like, 
Uh, I'm going to go off and sail with Danny. You stay in Volantis. Let's make Hero. Um, let's make uh, Grey Worm a member of the King's Guard. I feel like we have to. I mean, what else is he going to do? He's a eunuch. He can't have kids. He can't hold lands. I feel we should make him a member of the King's Guard. How old is he? 42. Brave. He's still a skilled fighter. It's not like he's a bad fighter. He's not greatest, but I think Danny would rather have people she trusts. So let's do it. I appreciate offer, but I never look much good in white. Okay, so Grey Worm has actually, you know, said no. I'm guessing because maybe he feels he's a better commander. He doesn't see himself as a bodyguard. And I, c I can appreciate that. He doesn't think he, he feels like he's a glorified bodyguard. He doesn't feel it's for him. Okay, then, hero. You were trained by Barristan. Barristan would have been a great member of the King's Guard. It is the highest honor to serve you in your King's Guard. Thank you very much. There we go. Look at that. Hero, a member of the King's Guard. That is awesome. It still goes to Talad. Okay, let's just make Talad it then. He's not fit to serve in the King's Guard. My court, I'll go through the rest later. My court did to Mana hardly eats anything for fear of turning fat. Well, that's not good. That's not good at all. Um, Danny, I think, likes temperance, maybe. She doesn't want someone to eat too much. Yeah, she's also temperate. My ward to mana always falls to the rules. I always find these come in twos. But yeah. And refuses to cheat when playing games. Life will reward her. Uh, yeah, she's used that power for good. Let's go for that. The war's been won. And there we go. The enemy army's been crushed. And so the High Septon did fight against us. But now he has crowned me. I feel like Danny could forgive that. Yeah, the High Septon, what was he meant to do? Let's, uh, let's leave him be. And you know, this kind of appeases then people faith for the seven, you know, the sort of traditions of the realm. Very much like Aegon the Conqueror did. Even be. Ah. Now Littlefinger has been brought before us. Now, from what we would know about Littlefinger, we know that he's been raised up by the Lannisters. So I, I think Danny could understand why he supported them. But then would she send him to the dungeons? Or forfeit the trident? Um, I don't think she'd do it because he you know, fought against her. She could see why he was loyal to them. And she probably hears that he's a capable man. But she probably hears the court that you know he's not maybe to be trusted. So is there anyone else in the Riverlands that Danny does trust? And I don't think there is. I mean, obviously, you know, the Tullys did use to control it. Um, but they've now basically lost everything. I don't know if there's any Tullys left. Did the Blackfish survive? Let's have a quick look. Okay, Tully died in the dungeons of Cersei Lannister. There are no living members of House Tully left. I mean, obviously the Tullys did betray Danny, so again, I, I don't think Danny would have given them the lands anyway. Um, you know, in the um, in the Usurper's Rebellion, you know, Robert's Rebellion, they did support against him. I, I don't think there's any in particular that she would support, yeah. I can't think of any houses in the Riverlands that she would want to put up. Um, she could give the land to someone else that she trusts, you know, someone who's helped her on the way. But I feel like Danny just doesn't know enough about the politics of the Riverlands, so I think she would leave him be. I think she's going to leave Littlefinger, because I say, obviously we know as the audience that Littlefinger shouldn't be trusted, he's a bad guy, but Danny does not necessarily know this, so I'm not sure what she would do in that situation. I'm going to leave him be. I say, it's very different, you know, when a character acts in a certain way we disagree with, it's because they might not have all the information that we have. Um, that's something people always need to keep in mind when they watch the TV show and read the books. The characters don't always have the information that we have sometimes. Um, Lucian Lannister. He, he, oh, okay. He wants to pay the ransom for his personal release. 46 gold. Um, no, you'll stay in custody. We're not going to let you out just because you have lots of money. We know the Lannisters have money. That's what you're known for. Harold Aaron has been brought before us. Now, obviously, the Arons did betray our father. That is known. Part of the usurper's dogs. Ooh, his wife, Sansa. What has happened? Huh. That is a very... They managed to get a divorce. They must have. I don't think I've ever seen the AI get a divorce. That is very interesting. She could have another kid and it could be a Stark. <gasps> this could save the Starks. Oh my god. The Starks could be saved. Good job, Sansa. That's if she has a matrilineal marriage. 
Um, obviously, it would be even better if the sun died, and then that would destroy the Arons. So the Arons and Starks are kind of on a knife edge, um, kind of linked together. Which family will survive? It will come down to which, which kids can kind of live on. But that's an interesting one. Now, but the thing is, like I said, um, Harold, though, is not a direct descendant of John Arryn. Obviously, he was from a minor branch of the family has been put up into power there because John Arryn's line has died off. So maybe Danny would be more nice about it. Obviously, though, like Littlefinger, he did fight against us. But again, it's because he had loyalty to the throne, maybe not specifically against Danny. And everyone basically fought against us, so it's hard to say. So I think she's going to leave him be. She's going to try and be, you know, just about this. She knows not all of them are evil. That's how I feel. I feel like with Harold, it's only be if he was John Aaron's son, if this was Robert Aaron, if Robert Aaron hadn't died, I think Danny would be. Then again, John Robert's just a kid. But if he was older, she might just keep him in the dungeons, possibly, um, or forfeit the no, probably forfeit the veil if it was him. Um, and actually, notice I'm quite looking the veil anyway. Thinking about what families are here. Yeah, there's none that really link to Danny. None of the major families or smaller families I can think of at the top of my head. So she'll leave them be. Then we have Titus Blackwood. Titus Blackwood. Um, nothing really against the man. Leave him be, yeah. We don't want to cause too much, you know, change inside the realm. Really, our main enemy is the usurper's dogs. Uh, the ones who, you know, kind of pushed my father power and made me and my brother's life a live in hell. And those that were actively involved. So, for example... The Tyrells are slightly different here. They were actively, obviously, involved with the Lannisters in probably in Danny's point of view, seeing as they were married together, and the fact that obviously when we took control, basically Marjorie was one of the figureheads. If actually no, technically she'd gone off, hadn't she? But Mace Tyrell was kind of the big support of keeping them in power at the time. So I feel like this is slightly different. Then again, we've probably heard about the exploits of his son. You know, he did die fighting the White Walkers. That has to be commended. As Lord Commander. We could just send Mace to the dungeon. Then again, Mace Tyrell did actually support our father. Ooh, that makes it even more difficult. Mace Tyrell actually supported the Targaryens during the rebellion. I feel like maybe that would be more in Danny's mind, because that's normally what she thinks about when she thinks of Westeros. That's all she knows about Westeros. So actually, yeah, I guess we'll even be. And I actually kinda like this because we're not changing the fabric of Westeros too much. Which I think is kind of nice. Um for now. But we are getting, you know, obviously some, uh, not hostages, you know, wards. You know, like Theon. We've got Royce Baelish, the heir to the Trident. We've got Mia Arryn, the daughter to the Arryns. So Brandon Blackwood. Okay. And we've got Willis Tyrell. Ooh, the heir to High Garden. He did have a son. Eric Tyrell. I don't normally get to see him having kids. That's good for him. Uh, Qualton of the defeated Royal Lannister family has been brought before you. What is to be done with him? Now, just been going over what we've been going through and what I will do in a bit. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts in the comment section. Which ones do you agree with me with? Which one do you completely disagree with me with? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Personally, for me, I feel like, you know, we don't know what Danny's going to do. We can't see into her mind. But I, I think I was reasonable enough about it. Um, Carlton of the defeated Royal Lassa family has been brought before you. What is to be done with him? Ha. Huh. Bring me his head in all Lannister lands. I don't think you should take his head because he's just a child. Literally, he's done nothing. Um, when you think about it, um, he shall have it. I shall have his head from the dungeons. I think we'll just keep him in the dungeons for now. Yeah, because he he is obviously a threat to my position. Even though we've oust him as a Lannister, he could still be a threat. So I think Danny would just keep him in his family, kind of a uh, how should I put this? Not in the dungeons, but in household arrest. So we'll do that. Tino, the defeated Lancer family, you know, his brother as well. Uh, throw him in the dungeon. I shall take him as a hostage. There we go, that's better, yeah. So he, we're going to take him as a hostage. So he's kind of in a household arrest. I, if I could have for the other one, I'd done that as well, but obviously he has land. Then we've got Marcella Lannister. Throw in the dungeons. We're going to throw in a dungeon. Obviously she is older, so she, you know, does, you know she, she kind of knows a bit better. Um, obviously there is also Edric Storm, but Danny might not know about Edric Storm. He seems to have gone off to, uh, Lys. Made a whole life of his own. Uh, drunkard now. Thinking about what could have been. I could bring him back. Some people, I think some people would like me probably to give him Storm's, um, the Stormlands, but I feel Danny, she has no, um, feeling towards the Baratheons, and obviously the Baratheons did betray, you know, they were the main instigator of the Usurper's Rebellion. She has no attachment to the Baratheons. The Selmys are more where it's at for her. Um, Lucian from the dungeon. 
All hail her grace, Danny Daenerys of the House Targaryen, the first of her name, Queen of the Andals and the Rhoyne and the First Men, Lord of the Seven Kingdoms and Protector of the Realm, Queen of Marine, Breaker of Chains, Khaleesi of the Dothraki Plains, um, Stormborn, Mother of Dragons, etc. Exactly. Long live the Queen. And that's the list of the last one, okay. My Lord of the Feed House will take her as a hostage. So there we go. I'm going to have to end this part here. Um, even though we haven't done much, that was a lot of things to go through and have to think about. Um, and there's still a lot of things to think about in the realm before we move on. Did my son get his dragon? He did. He got Viserion. Will he be able to tame him this time? We'll have to wait and see. Will Danny have to get married to someone to keep the realm in check? That will be something we'll have to look into in a bit. Maybe I can marry Barristan's son. <gasps> oh, it'll take him a while to get old enough, though. We'll see. We'll see. But yeah. See you guys next time. I've been Angie Paradox. What? <laughs>